Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a very good day. So this is my first movie review. Amazing, isn't it? Not on a very amazing movie, I'm afraid. But anyways, we'll get into that. So how this works, guys, is basically the books I will choose to read this month, I will take one of these books and do a movie review on its movie adaptation. For this dystopia month, I chose to do a movie review on Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. Anyways, guys, let's put up the info right up here on the side. This movie was released in 1966. It was directed by Francois Truffaut. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I like speaking in weird French accents. So the actors in this film are Oscar Werner, who plays Guy Montag, Julie Christie, who plays Clarice and Linda, two roles, dual roles, and the captain is played by Cyril Cusack. So the movie takes place in a futuristic dystopian setting where the government has banned books. You can't be caught reading a book, you can't have a hidden library stashed in your attic, that is bad. If an informant rats you out, the firemen come to burn your books. So that's, that's pretty horrible. I was kind of crying inside when they were burning the books. Just too painful. So our main character, Guy Montag, he is a fireman. And one day, Guy Montag is met by his next door neighbor, Clarice, who starts asking him why he does what he does and asks him if he's happy. And that kind of snowballs into him starting to question why books are so dangerous. And he starts to switch sides. Anyway, so that's a quick synopsis of what Fahrenheit 451 is. Let's talk about how the movie went, how I thought of the film. It was kind of bad, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it was okay. I thought the pacing was pretty steady, kind of got slow at times. It was interesting to see the setup of the film of this dystopia world. I thought the score was really good, it's quite intense. The actors kind of had a flat monotone performance, which is both good and bad. Good being this society, everyone is kind of not there, they're kind of hollow. And so this monotone voice, this acting kind of adds to that society where everyone is very zombie-like, but also kind of bad because as a viewer, you're kind of starting to wander and starting to become distracted with things in the scene like the setting and the costume design. Overall, I thought the acting was okay. Oscar Werner did a pretty good job. I think he has a very thick Austrian accent. He had a very Jeremy Renner kind of feel in his look. Julie Christie kind of added some oomph to her character, differentiated herself with the other characters in the film, so that was good. Also, let's talk about the setting and costume design. It's very dated, very 1960s. Their attempt at the futuristic society, good effort. It was kind of cool. The wall screens where they have TVs on their walls, I was kind of expecting an entire wall to be a TV screen, but it kind of end up being the size of my iMac, so that was kind of disappointing. You know, I think I was more interested that it had a 1960s feel than attempting to be a futuristic feel in the 1960s, so you know. Also, there were parts in the film that were unintentionally funny. A Dora the Explorer moment, not gonna lie. In this book, Guy Montag's wife does an interactive play between her and the TV. In the film, they kind of play it out like interactive television they do with young children they do today, like Dora the Explorer. It was really funny. Very funny, <laughs> indeed. But it didn't play like that at all how it is in the book. You kind of picture it differently, so. Yeah. Anyways, guys, let's get into the book to movie adaptation kind of comparison part. So compared to the book, I don't think it gives Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451 justice. There were some characters missing, parts of the book missing, futuristic elements in the book that are missing. Understandable because I don't think they would have had the technology to pull some of these things off. Although I do think there are elements in the film that don't play out in the book, like Guy Montag reading a newspaper, but everything is in comics and there are no words. So it kind of adds to that dystopia society where no one is allowed to read. So what the film was lacking, I felt, was that intensity, the motives and motivation and passion these characters had for books. Reading the book, you can see where characters are coming from, why they're so passionate about protecting these books and reading these books. You don't get that in the film. I think the film just minimally goes over that. Censorship is bad. Knowledge, reading, critical thinking is good. You know, I think the concept trying to portray that message was there in the film, but I don't think it was executed as strongly as in the book. So with that being said, guys, I am going to give two stars out of five. Yes, I'm doing stars. I will be doing that with book reviews too, but I'm still keeping my readable, unreadable, watchable, unwatchable rating. Don't you worry. Yeah, I'm giving this two stars out of five. Unwatchable. 
if anything, read the book Fahrenheit 451. And the film, if you don't get to the film, it's okay. It's fine. The book really captures that passion in the characters and that message and it was executed very well. And you get more of the world building of what Ray Bradbury's world was like. So that's very good. So that's everything guys. I will talk to you later. Bye!